Good. Matt Clark here at the new Matt Clark. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Friday? I'm doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great. And I hope you had a great Christmas. You're going to have a great New Year's. Everybody's being safe. Everybody's re being responsible. But also enjoying the love of their family. Because that's what Christmas is all about. And we all know that. For me, it's about nothing else. I don't care about gifts. I don't care about nothing. I just want to be around my family and my loved ones. But today we're not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can keep yourself safe and earn respect when you first go into provincial, okay? It's, it's not an easy thing to do. And the things that you do in the first day or two can literally dictate your whole sentence. You could make a bad mistake, piss somebody off, that person decides that now they're going to center you out and you are going to be the object of their desires for violence, for bullying, for whatever. And you don't want to do that. So the smartest thing to do is to stay as low profile as possible. And I don't care how gangster you are, or how thugged out you are, how much time you've done in the past. Every block is different and every group of individuals is different. You could land on a block that is safe and has a bunch of guys acting like they're not like they're tough, but they're not. But you could also very easily land on a block that is super duper dangerous and could cost you your life or your faculties like that. And I've been on both. And I'll tell you, you're gonna do easier time not around the violent dudes. But being on the more gangster blocks, you're also going to live better. You know what I'm saying? There's gonna be more contraband. There's, it, you're just gonna live better. But you're also gonna have to live on your toes all the time. Cause even if you're cool, in jail, overnight, shit can change. One bad decision on your part, or just somebody being a total asshole, which can happen. But we're not gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about baseline. What is the smartest thing for you to do the day you walk in? Now, you're never gonna just walk in, right? You're gonna go to court first. So. When you are at court, you're going to have an opportunity to meet one or two dudes, possibly start some kind of a friendship, and give yourself a leg up. You know what I'm saying? It's a good way to kind of get comfortable with people that you don't know that are in this kind of environment. And it'll also give you an opportunity to listen and feel out what is going on back at the jail what is the temperature at the jail what are the good blocks what are the bad blocks these are the kind of questions that most dudes ask in the court cells <clears throat> keep it to a minimum you know what's what's a good block to go to what's the best area for me to go to do the best time simple question don't make yourself look nervous don't make yourself look scared and don't make yourself look new New people are automatically going to be targeted for victimization because they're not educated. They don't know. Nobody has filled them in yet. So people can take advantage of you without you even knowing that you're being taken advantage of. And I'll give you an example. When I was in Tyak, I didn't, the first one, two times I was there, I was there for like a short period of time. I didn't want to eat any of the food or anything like that. And I remember specifically getting punked off for a fish stick. I didn't take it that way. I just looked at it like, I don't want the damn fish stick, so take it. But once somebody explained it to me, bro, if somebody comes at you and says, yo, let me get that, you can't just up it. You know, there's, you have to set a precedence. You have to set the example of how people need to treat you and you need to set it right away or it can cause issues for you later on down the road if all of a sudden you flip the script and try to become a different person then you've already told everybody you are walk right on the block 
read the fucking rules. I don't care how gangster you are. I don't care. Just read them. Show some respect to the block. You know, it's a courtesy thing. Most of the time it's going to be in an obvious place, like under the TV or something like that. Don't wait to be asked. Just go. Second thing you're going to do, go right to the shower. No questions asked. Do not go near the phone. You go near the phone before you go into the shower, it's a good chance you're going to have a rough time on that block. Or at least for a few days. Because that is a big no-no. Hygiene is a big deal. Like you'll have raging crackheads in the street that are spick and span organized and spotless in jail. So majority of people are very clean and hygienic. Because it's such a non-hygienic environment, people have to kind of go above and beyond for their environment, their space to be clean. So people take it seriously. You don't go in the shower, you're probably going to get smacked. If you argue about going in the shower, I took a shower in the morning before court, any of that shit, you're going to get smacked. Take a shower. It's not a big deal. And when you do take the shower, make sure you're wearing one pair of boxers. If you only have one pair, wear them in the shower. And when you go back up into your cell, hang them up. Wear your jumper or whatever. Hang them up. You know, don't walk around on the block nude. Don't walk around on the block with your jumper on with no boxers on. Don't do none of that. If they see any of that, they may not be serious about it. They may joke. But that joke is going to kill your reputation. They're going to call you a batibwai or a fireman or something like that. That's, this is what's going to happen. And then from then on, this is going to be who you are. And I'm going to tell you something else. If you go to a super jail, there's a mailing system. Because the pod is like an octagon and each range is a pie shape in that octagon. There's doors between each block, so if the coppers want to do a sneak attack search, or if they want to come in from the sides and the front for whatever reason, or when they're doing their walks, they go through those side doors. Those side doors, you can pass envelopes through those doors. It's a kite system. That's how people communicate from range to range to range. And each range will usually dictate one person as the mailman. The last thing you ever want to become is a mailman. That means you have now become bottom on the block. It doesn't necessarily mean guys are going to smack you or beat you up or whatever. But guys are definitely going to use you as a way to crack jokes, to push people around, to get extra food when they need it. To have somebody run over here and do this, run over there and do that, like an assistant. That's basically what you're going to become, but for the whole range. And if you ever do step up, the whole range is going to violate you because you accepted the role as mailman. Just don't accept it. You know what I mean? If you don't mind, if you don't mind being run around and this and that and people talking to you like that, jokingly, you just never want to become a mailman, okay? It just puts you at the bottom of the totem pole. It's like being in a pack of dogs and being the bottom, okay? For the first little while, be inconspicuous. Don't try and get involved on cigarettes or joints. Never go where you're not invited. If you go where you're not invited, you could very easily get assaulted. You could very easily get disrespected to a point where you might as well be assaulted. Or you could even get bounced off the range altogether for moving in a way that the block doesn't want you to. And last time, in all my life, okay, I was on blocks. I was part of the range. Always. Because I grew up in the system. You know, I knew how to move. I was prepared to fight. And I knew everybody. But last time I went in... I was on heroin and I was really bad. Like I was 168 pounds. I'm 230 pounds right now. Imagine me at 168 pounds. When I was, when I had first started doing my channel, people thought I was using. That was me riding a bike around every day and stuff. I was like 190 something pounds and I looked skinny 
skinny. So imagine me at 168. I had a mohawk shaved into my head and I went into Lindsay. I felt like I was the same dude. People should respect me the same way. And eventually they did, but I had to re-earn my respect because of my appearance. People are like, fuck this waste man. Why are we gonna share with this buckski? We're not going to. So I remember sitting there trying to get in on this joint, trying to get in on this joint, and two dudes, two big black dudes, come over to me and they're like, bro, you need to stop trying to get in on Amanda's things. And I remember feeling crushed. I This is one of the reasons why I stopped doing what I was doing because I felt like now I'm coming to jail, but I'm a, I'm a buck tee. You know what I'm saying? I can't be this dude. Went cold turkey, quit, started working out three and a half months. I was 225 pounds and smashing people because I had to, I had to, or I was going to get bullied around the same way that anybody will if you show weakness. So when you go in, be inconspicuous. Don't talk to people. Don't do none of that stuff. Just chill. Feel out the environment. See who is the big dog. Who's the loudest? Avoid that person, typically. And who and how you need to move around, you know? Um, some dudes you can laugh and you can joke with. Some dudes you can't. You need to understand this stuff before you really start socializing with people, unless you're a pretty monotone, chill guy who's gonna be respectful at all times. But a lot of people think that they can come in and make jokes and be funny, and people are gonna be into it. If you're new, they're not. So be inconspicuous, feel out the scene, see what's going on, and then start showing people your personality. If you wanna get involved quicker, maybe start playing cards. Get involved in a workout crew. There's nothing better for you to do when you're inside than working out. You're improving yourself physically, mentally, and really the only way you can improve yourself in a place like Lindsay or Maplehurst or the Toronto South. How else? There's no other opportunity for you to improve yourself. So you might as well do it physically. You got nothing but time and you will be amazed how quickly your body will transform and how good you will feel eating three three squares a day regardless whether they're shit not taking in all the crap that you're normally taking in on a day-to-day -day and exercising regularly you become a freaking machine i become like a 230 pound hyperactive fucking machine i'm not a super violent guy that always wants to fight or whatever that's not it but i definitely go through my time comfortably because of how big i am and how prepared I am, you know? You need to think about these things. What happens if you do get into a fight? Are you gonna have the energy or the wind to protect yourself? If you hit the ground, not everybody's gonna stop. Some people get carried away and will stomp and stomp and stomp and you could lose your life. So when you get in there, Join an exercise team. It'll be the fastest way for you to meet some dudes and possibly some like-minded people who think the same way. And uh, I think it's just good for you, you know? And what a better way to improve yourself and also protect yourself and ensure that you have a better chance at going home when you are done your sentence. You know what I'm saying? And I'm telling you, that confidence of being physically fit and prepared, it goes a long way in how you carry yourself, you know, and how people see you and view you as a man, you know. If people see you as like a an alpha kind of dude, they're going to be way less likely, likely sorry, <laughs> to try and take advantage of you. This is just a fact, you know. It's not always about throwing punches. Sometimes... It's just about giving the impression that you are something. But you should never give the impression if that impression isn't 
true. And that's another mistake a lot of things, a lot of guys do, is they think that the only way to come in is to come in like, I need to fire off on the first person, you know, I'm this and that, but they've never really been in that circumstance. So they're taking bad advice instead of just being themselves. Like, you never want to get punked off. You always want to stand up for yourself, for a fact. But you also want to avoid physical confrontation as much as possible. Anytime you get into a beef in jail, there is a possibility that that will get out of hand and you could lose your life. And even get out of hand and later on down the road, you could lose your life. I can't tell you how many people I know and have heard of that smash guys in jail, they touch the street and pop. It's a fact. So I, I, my best advice would be go onto the block, read the rules, take a shower, and fucking chill. Maybe find a table, go sit down, watch TV, keep a low profile. Some people are going to come up and talk to you. Just be chill. Be yourself. Act like you would if you were on the street. Unless you're an idiot on the street. But act like you would want somebody to treat you or see you. Talk to people that way. Respect goes a long way in jail. So, uh, and if you do decide anybody who's coming in to smuggle anything in with you, I am telling you right now, you could become a, a star on that block, but you could also become a target on that block. Some guys won't care if you're going to share. They don't want to share with you. So these are all things you need to weigh out before you start a sentence. And it starts from the minute you walk into that court cell, from the minute you come out of that paddy wagon and you're in with the population, your reputation starts there. And a reputation is important. I know they tell you, ah, who cares what people think of you? Yes, who cares what people think of you in 99.9% .9 of your life? The one 0.1% that people do need to think about is when they walk into a fucking jail. It does matter what people think of you and how they look at you. And that will depend on how, if you go home or not. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys so you don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody has to go to prison. Nobody has to deal with addiction or has to steal or or hurt people, or whatever it is, that's what I do, but that's not a reality, people are people, man, and we're just about in 2024, and uh, it just is what it is, the world is how it is, and the reality is people are going to go to jail, and prison, and do crime, and kill people, and steal, these things are going to continue to happen until there are no people, because it's human nature, so if you are going to go to prison or jail, it's better to be prepared and take advantage of the circumstances that you're in. So that's what my videos are about. And uh, honestly, I just hope that nobody goes to jail. You know, I hope you take my advice. But if you do have to go, I hope you just be yourself. Don't fake the funk. It's not a fake it till you make it situation. If you're not a gangster, then don't act like a gangster. You know, if you're not uh, uh, a fighter, don't act like a fighter. If you're not the best tattoo artist, you probably shouldn't be telling people you are. These are the kind of things, you know, if you're not a coke boy, then don't tell stories that you are because people will look into this stuff, man. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. People will look into it, you know, if you're popping at the mouth too much. So... Ultimately, it could be up to you, you know. You could go do good, easy time. It just depends on you. Love each and every one of you. The new Mac Club.